Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation with complex numbers. We have e to the power z equals 1 plus the square root of 3 multiplied by i and we're going to be solving for z values. What else can we solve for, right? If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I go over the basics and always ask a lot of questions. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, along with complex numbers, go ahead and check out CyberMath, that is cyber with an S. I also have a short channel. Great, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to be presenting different methods for this. That's what I usually do, if possible. And the first method is basically going to focus on the... First, we're going to start by using the natural log, because why not, right? So we have e to the power z equals 1 plus the square root of 3i. And now we're going to ln both sides. When we ln both sides, this is going to be ln e, which is 1. And we're going to get ln of a complex number. And then we're going to bring this down. So it's going to be z equals ln 1 plus the square root of 3i. Case closed? Not really, because what is the ln of a complex number? It's just another complex number, right? But how do you express that complex number? That's the million dollar question. So we kind of get stuck unless we do know how to do complex logarithm. But you gotta be careful because with the complex logarithm, you can express it in infinitely many ways. In other words, it's multi-valued. So what do we do? Let's go ahead and take a look at it from an Euler perspective, or should I say Eulerian. Euler is obviously the greatest mathematician, not obvious for everyone, but just, I'm just letting you know that he's, the, he's great. And he's the greatest, he's best, anyways. So he gave us a lot of good formulas. And one of them is the following. If you have anything like e to the power i theta, that can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. And this kind of gives us the most beautiful equation in math, we replace theta with pi, so on and so forth. You get a lot of nice identities from here. But that's not the purpose. We're trying to solve for the unknown. So can z be i theta? That's a good question, right? That means z is imaginary. If z is i theta, then e to the power z is just going to be this. But in our case, we have 1 plus square root of 3i. So can this equal 1 plus square root of 3i? That's a good question, right? Well, it depends, probably, right? If theta is real, then no. Why? Because you can't really, if, you know, sine theta and cosine theta are both real, and let's say you're comparing these two complex numbers, the only way they can be equal is that the real parts are equal and imaginary parts are equal. But that can't be happening. Cosine of an angle can be 1, yes, that's fine, but at the same time, sine cannot be square root of 3. Well, sine can never be square root of 3 if theta is real. For complex, that's a possibility. Even though we're dealing with co complex numbers, we want to use a real theta, like in the sense of real numbers, okay? So this type of approach is not going to work too simplistic, yes, ab absolutely. But this is probably going to help you set up the solution eventually. So here's what I'm going to do. Any complex number can be written in different forms. One of them is called the standard form, a plus bi, okay? And we'll revisit this. Now, this is significant because it's also the name of this channel, right? Hopefully you knew that. Now, another way to write it is the polar form. And Euler gave us a shortcut. We just talked about it, right? e to the i theta can be expressed like this. So r is the modulus in this case and theta is the argument, okay? So if you consider a complex number in the complex plane, which is also called the argon plane, it'll make an angle like this, and this is gonna be the real axis, this is gonna be the imaginary axis. In our case, one plus root three i, so we're gonna have one unit this way and root three i units that way. And this is gonna be our number, whatever the number is, right? I'm not saying z because it's e to the z. So this is our e to the z. You can call it w if you want, for simplicity's sake, but that's how you can express it. What is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that if you can find the modulus, maybe, you can graph it, but you don't really need to know the modulus because, I mean, you already know it. 
hopefully, right? From the Pythagorean theorem, it's just two. One root three, two. You should know the 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? That also tells you this theta is pi over three or 60 degrees, pi over three radians. Great. Now, why is that important? Because you're going to plug these in here. In other words, one plus root three i can be written as the r, which can also be used as a radius if this is a circle, right? Two times e to the power i times pi over three. How does this help? Well, maybe you can set it equal to what we're given. What were we given? We were given e to the power z equals this. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So now we can write this as e to the power z equals two times e to the power i pi over three. Now the presence of two also tells you why our first approach did not work. When we try to set these two things equal to each other, it didn't work because the r was assumed to be one, which is not one. In this case, the modulus is one, but not on the other side of things. That's why we have this two here. Make sense? And the rest should be fairly easy, don't you think? Well, if you just log both sides, but this time it's going to be different because you're not logging a complex number, you're logging a, what is the term? You're logging an exponential. Sorry, I got stuck there. So let's go ahead and do it. When we do it, we're going to get z. So z is going to be ln of a product. And how do you do this? When you have a product, it turns into a sum, right? It's going to be ln2 plus ln e to the i pi over 3. But again, ln e is 1, so you're going to bring it to the front. And guess what? z is going to be ln2 plus i times pi over 3. Here's the problem. This is a solution, but you got to be careful. This doesn't give all, us all the solutions. Remember what I told you? There are infinitely many solutions. Why? Because you can add multiples of 2 pi to theta, plus, minus, whatever, it doesn't matter. So instead of pi over 3, we should use 2 pi n. And n is an integer here, so that you can cover all multiples of 2 pi, which is going to bring you to the same point, actually. But when you look at it from a theta perspective, they are different angles. Therefore, there are multiple ways to represent the same number. Okay, when I write it as 1 plus root 3i, again, we can represent it in infinitely many ways, right? By changing the angle. But anyways, so that gives us a solution. Is that valid? We're also going to compare our solution to what we get from Wolfram Alpha and see who did a better job, okay? Humans or LLMs. Great. Now, that's one way to approach the problem. Here's a second approach, which I really like, by the way because it uses the name of this channel. What's the name of this channel again? In case you forgot, it is A plus B I. Yes, that should be the key to the kingdom. So most problems can be solved by setting Z equal to A plus B I. And this is no exception. Why? Because if you look at it, replace Z with A plus B I. Of course, in this case, you need to know that A and B are real numbers. A is the real part, B is the imaginary part. So these two will part nicely. Okay, I'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, we do have an exponential here, but we don't have that on the right-hand side. That's okay. Let's split it up first, e to the i times e to the power bi. Since b is real, this is really cool, look at it. This is the same as e to the power i theta, except theta was replaced by b, which means by using Euler's most beautiful formula, we can write this as cosine b plus i times sine of b. Again, b is real, cosine b and sine b are also real. a is real, e to the a is also real. Awesome. Now, take a look. We're going to distribute this, and then we're going to get the following. Now, set it equal to 1 plus root 3i, and you'll be good to go. How? Now, this can equal this, which means e to the a cosine b is 1, and e to the a, oops, e to the a sine b is equal to root 3. Now, I should probably write this first because I'm going to divide. So let me copy this. Okay. And then erase. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and divide these expressions because e to the a cancels out. And we end up with tangent b equals 
square root of 3. How many angles are there between 0 and 2 pi whose tangent equals root 3? And the answer is 2. Why? Because first of all, pi over 3 is one of the angles. And the other one is pi plus pi over 3. So there are two angles. However, let's go back here. When we said, okay, this can be 1 and this can be root 3, we're basically saying that. For example, take a look at this. Okay, take a look at this. We know that e to the a cannot be negative, which means sine b also has to be positive, right? Because the product is positive, e to the a is positive, it can't even be zero, and sine b has to be positive. That means you're either in the first quadrant or the second quadrant. But if you look at our tangent, whose tangent is equal to root three, we have two angles, pi over three and five pi, no, not pi, four pi over three, this is not going to happen because we're not in the second quadrant and sine is not going to be positive in that case. So we have to stick to one angle. This kind of uniquely determines. In other words, b is equal to pi over 3. Beautiful. That means sine b is root 3, which means e to the a is equal to 1, which means a is equal to 0. Really? Is that the case? No, wait a minute. Sorry, I messed up. If b is equal to root pi over 3, then sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Okay, how did I miss that? I don't know. So from here, e to the a becomes 2. How is that important? Well, just plug it in and you're going to get the answer. But wait a minute. We got e to the a. We didn't get a. Well, ln both sides, you're going to get a equals ln 2. And b is equal to pi over 3. And what did we say about z? We said z is equal to a plus bi, which is a plus b i. Of course, you can add multiples of 2 pi to it to make the solution complete. And this brings us to the end, but let's go ahead and check the result from Wolfram Alpha. See if Wolfram Alpha can find the solution this way. Do you think so? Let's check. Okay. Wolfram Alpha ta -da -da -da, gives us the solution in such a weird way that it can't even figure out what we did. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out Cyber Math and A plus BI. And bye-bye.